So, dear colleagues, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you our today's speaker, Professor Rodrigo Vicenzo, uh, who is visiting us from Chile, from far away, but still he is online with us, and he will give a talk on interorbital photonic lattices. So, in case if you have any questions, please either raise your hand, or you may type the question in the chat. You may also ask by the voice, but please uh, make sure not to interrupt the speaker just in the middle of the sentence. So, Rodrigo, please, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Maxim, for the invitation. I'm really glad to, to give this talk. Uh, although I would prefer to, to be there, actually, I have never been in Russia. So, but okay, hopefully next year. Um, today, I will talk about some very recent results that we, we got in our lab. Actually, we performed the, the, the big experiment last year in the middle of the pandemic. And, uh, and we, 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 we performed the, the experiment at that time, around July or August, uh, in a very clandestine uh, way, actually, I would say, because we were not allowed to go to the university, but we went there because we have to, to see how the lab is working. Uh, and at the same time, we were doing experiments. So uh, because we try to, to keep, I mean, the, the activities, the research activities in our lab, independent of the pandemic. Uh, the image that I, I choose to, to introduce the talk is a very nice image, at least for me, where you can see actually the motivation of this talk, trying to, to see how we can excite different modes and, and web guides, because I'm talking about photonics. Uh, um, I will focus on, 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 on the fundamental mode that this is this circular wave function, but also in the P wave function, or dipole, we call we used to call dipole to this uh, wave function that has a node in the middle, and we I will show you that uh, that we can right now actually make this guide interact because if you don't prepare, for example, the experiment correctly, uh, this mode will not interact. They will not see each other. So, and this is what the main the main idea of the experiment. I will I, I will focus this talk. Uh, I come obviously from Universidad de Chile and in Chile, South America, far away from you. Actually, this is the distance. I don't know how, well, we, we don't have a dire flight for sure, uh, but it's a very long distance. Um, this is my university. I, I belong to the engineering faculty uh, in the University of Chile. And we have a, a, an old building where the, the Department of Physics is located and also new, new buildings appear in there. It's a very uh, um, uh, active faculty in my country. It's the best faculty of engineering in the, in the whole country. So, um, and well, there, there is a photo of my lab. Um, my, my research area, actually, I belong to uh, uh, a community that was working for 20 years and even more, 25, I would say, um, in discrete nonlinear systems. Actually, my focus uh, research uh, was uh, originally in nonlinear discrete localization. And at that time, we were looking for different lattices and try to find the right condition for exciting a localized, a nonlinear localized state and looking for the stability, the condition about the dimension, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And this was uh, our purpose, actually, our research focus. Uh, actually, it was in, in Dresden in the, in the group of Sergei Flach. I don't know if you, you know him. I was working with uh, Yuri Kipcher, then maybe you know him. Um, he, and, and we were working in dot, those kind of topics. I mean, research in discrete nonlinear systems. Here, I, I show you some experimental images from my lab, uh, from a former experiment that is not uh, installed today in the lab. That is, uh, uh, it was performed uh, using uh, photorefractic crystals, where you can excite, uh, for example, these lattices, and uh, they are a rectangular lattice or a square lattice, if you want to call it, or hexagonal lattice. We use a, a, an experimental technique that is quite complicated to explain here, but the, the point is that we have a discrete lattice. We have diffraction, that is a special uh, properties, dispersion properties of this kind of lattices. We call discrete diffraction, this, proper, this kind of patterns. 
uh, and this is quite typical discrete diffraction 2D, and this is uh, for hexagonal lattices where you have more neighbor side are surround you. So the diffraction pattern here is more close to the continuous, but here it's more close to the discrete. Um, and also we can perform at that time actually uh, Fourier transform of the image and you can uh, nicely get this um, very nice patterns that are related to the um, Fourier spade and the, actually the, of the brilliant zones in the respective lattices, okay, uh, as, a, as an introduction of the research. But then, Rodrigo, may I ask a question yeah. regarding the previous pictures? So Perfect. if you do the Fourier transform, then you need the phase of the field, and we like know that uh, measuring the phase in optics is, is more or less complicated. So how, how do you solve this? You just do the Fourier transform and take an image. It's, it's just that. I mean, because a, a lens is a Fourier transform. Ah, so, uh, so you do not have the, the, to measure the, the the phase of the optical field. You just uh, take the Fourier transform of the intensity. Exactly, directly. Ah, exactly, good, good. exactly. It, it's clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, and actually, these black lines indicate the gaps in the in the spectrum. Actually, the region where it's not allowed to to have waves actually, what define actually the limit of the different brilliant zones. But it's, it's directly an image uh, coming from uh, applying a lens and then the, the camera again. Yeah, okay, we, we, we don't follow the face. Uh, you're, you're right, actually, it's, it's complicated to, to trace the face. Um, a discrete system or uh, a photonic lattice is composed of waveguides. This is our basic ingredient and, and when I talk about this kind of system, I have to talk about a general system where you, you have a, some kind of oscillator that could be a drum, could be a, a pendulum, uh, a potential wave from, uh, from quantum mechanic. Doesn't matter, actually. The only thing you need is kind of a, a place where you can uh, study waves and including restrictions, because restriction allowed to generate certain kind of mode and discretize the number of mode and the number of energy, etc., etc. Actually, you can play this game with uh, uh, soda cans or with, uh, with uh, acoustic resonators or with micro cantilever uh, oscillator as well, etc., etc., etc. You can find this phenomena everywhere or you can excite this phenomena everywhere. Uh, some, most of them are artificial systems, for example, like cold atoms. You can also play this game with cold atoms. And the only important thing is that you have a place where uh, the wave uh, find restriction. And for us, uh, we will focus actually, because we're working in a photonic context, in an optical photonic context, we will focus on waveguides or fibers, optical fibers, if you want. This tube here shows a waveguide in optic, there is nothing else than a fiber, an optical fiber. And when you have that, you can find different modes. Of course, depending on the condition, as, as I will show you uh, in a minute, but you can have mode. The fundamental, we call this mode, the, the kind of Gaussian-like mode, uh, uh, the, the S-wave function. And we also have the dipoles, uh, or horizontal or vertical dipole, that if the waveguide is circular, is symmetric, this mode are completely degenerated. But uh, as I will show you, uh, our web guides are elliptical. So the mode are not degenerated. And uh, some of them are more tricky, actually, to, to, to excite experimentally. When you have the, the restriction, you can have different kind of mode, different nodes, and, and different kind of beautiful patterns there. Uh, but that will depend on the specific parameter of the web guide. As I, I, as, as I, I have wrote here, uh, the, the a same with guide can behave as a single mode or as a multi-mode. And this will depend on the, of the excitation, essentially. And this is nice from, uh, uh, from, um, from optics, because you can create a web guide that will be, for example, single mode for red light, 633 nanometers. And the same web guide, you, you can go to the lab and excite with a green laser, uh, five, 532 nanometers, and you can excite in the same web guide, 
a higher order mode. Because you, you in optic, you get a restriction that depends on the wavelength. And this is nice because in quantum mechanics, and this is the game we play with uh, when we learn quantum mechanics, that if you have a potential well, you will always have a fundamental mode. Always. You always have a bound state. Okay, because the mathematical condition is always fulfilled and therefore you have a solution. But if you have if you want to have higher order mode in, in a one to potential well, you have to overcome some restriction. And this is the over the, the restriction essentially tells you that you have to have a, a deep enough uh, potential well. Okay, this is okay. Or or at the same time, to have a wider potential well. And this is what you learn in quantum mechanics. But if you go to optics, you get almost the same situation. The width here is W and tell you that this W is larger, more mode will be uh, possible to excite. The, the contrast, the refractive index contrast, this is delta M parameter. This is the important thing because this is what uh, uh, generate the waveguide, allow you also to have uh, more mode. If delta N is larger, this restriction is smaller and you, you are allowed to excite more mode. But also, as I told you, you can play the same game with the lambda, with the wavelength, because you can have the, way, the, 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 the waveguide fabricated with a given width, a deeper, uh, given refractive in the contrast, but you can also play changing by changing the wavelengths. And this is what how we started to play this game several years ago when we, we, we somehow find, uh, just by chance at that time, was around 10 years ago, uh, that we, we simply changed the, the wavelength and it started to appear different mode that we were not expecting because we were not studying uh, higher order mode. And experimentally, we found it, and then we started to 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 be interested on these games of trying to excite a fundamental multimode and trying to think what can uh, come out from this interaction. Okay, sorry if I'm going too slow. I will be a, a bit fast faster now. So you have a web guide, and now we, we focus in creating physics because a web guide is like an atom, and this is the main message of the talk that we will consider a web guide as a 2D atom because the, the fundamental equation is, is, is exactly the same. So the solution must be the same. What can be different is the interpretation because quantum mechanics people uh, used to, to give uh, uh, a, a different interpretation of things, but the mathematical uh, equation is the same. So I expect the same solutions. So we have um, waveguides and we try to couple with a, a close a web guide in the universe. A, what I'm talking about the universe is because if you have an, an isolated atom in the universe, you will not have physics actually. You will have just an atom and nothing else. But physics and life start to uh, originate due to agglomeration, due to the interaction between different atoms to create molecules and then complex uh, proteins, for example, and then life. So if you need to, if you want to study physics, you need to somehow make interact something. And this something will be for us, the atoms or the waveguides. So we, we put, uh, we locate a, a different waveguide close to the first one. And we start to study what, what is the, what is the, 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 the result of that. Uh, we made an approximation that is couple mode theory uh, based on couple mode equation and, and Maxwell equation, sorry. And when you start to write down this parameter, you end up with a coupling coefficient. There is nothing else than a superposition integral be between the wave function in the left and the right wave guide, and the one and two. And this this formula right here, because actually it's not related to have an S wave function and a P wave function. Actually, it doesn't matter. Uh, you only need to have two mode that interact. But also this is um, maybe it's a mistake when you start to just work as a theoretician and you say that, well, this mode can interact with this mode and this other mode, etc. because you really need to prepare the experimental condition for getting the interaction. Uh, it's not for free and you have to, to play with that uh, as I will show you, okay? Because we can write this integral for fundamental and for a dipolar mode without any problem because you, we have the mathematical solution we put there, we have a coupling. 
But then if you go to experiment, you will notice that they not, do not interact. Although you are predicting that B is different to zero and can be large, uh, they not necessarily interact because you really need to prepare the system to, to make different modes to interact with each other. Okay, what is important and, and, and trivial to see is that if the distance is too large, well, the coupling is zero because everything is depending on the evanescent tail that enters in the second wet guide. This is the way that uh, how the coupling appears in these script systems is the, the, the evanescent tail entering in the neighbor wet guide that create, uh, that make a different the susceptibility, the electric susceptibility and in that way, create a coupling coefficient. So the Maxwell equation reduced to two simple dipo, uh, dimer uh, model, where you have the propagation of the, of the mode you're assuming. For example, we're assuming, as I told you here, the fundamental mode in the, in the, in the first width guide and the fundamental mode in the second width guide. So the U1 will describe the amplitude of this mode in the width guide because this is couple mode theory. And then you have a propagation constant that if both width guides are equal, the propagation constant will be the same and the coupling constant that allow you to to jump, to, to interact with the second uh, wet guide. Uh, if you excite the system, I'm talking about only linear physics here. If you excite the system, uh, you will notice that, that, for example, the first wet guide, you will notice that the power will uh, evolve as a cosine function and the, and the power in the second wet guide will evolve as a sine function. But at the end, you have a periodical transfer of energy. That's all. I mean, this is simulation, this animation, a simple animation, and this is the experiment. What is quite nice, actually, if you fabricate a dimer um, and, yeah, and you use some material that is, uh, has some uh, dopant, you can excite fluorescence and you can take images uh, from the top. Actually, in our lab, we cannot do that because the material we're using is uh, can, uh, it's not fluorescent, but this is made in silica for uh, uh, in our lab, but fabricated for a different colleague uh, from Jena, Alexander Samait. Um, and you can see how the periodic uh, transfer of energy is producing and th that the model correctly describe the system experimentally. You can go to the experiment and you can measure this coupling constant that it actually all this dynamics is, is governed, is controlled by the, um, the coupling. I mean, the interaction between the coefficient. Here is C before I, I, I call B, sorry for that. Uh, but what we know is that there is exponential, exponential decay tendency depending on the distance, okay? What is quite trivial because if they're far away, they simply go to zero the interaction between waveguides. In our lab, we installed this technique uh, since two years ago, I would say, but with all this uh, stop from the pandemic, from a social conflict also in Chile. So we are, we have been two years very, very not in the lab as I, we would like to, but nevertheless, we installed the technique and um, consisting just to have a, a femtosecond laser uh, with this focal, focus set uh, inside a glass material. This is a borosilicate uh, glass material, um, which is quite common. Actually, it's used for, for uh, I mean, for screens or for the cell phones or for uh, the Pyrex is borosilicate. I mean, the Pyrex that you, you put in the oven. Um, essentially, what you are doing, uh, this is the theory behind, actually, it's a, 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 a picture concept about what you're doing actually with the laser. You're just kind of reordering uh, some molecules and, in, and, and that way you are increasing the refractive in the contrast at a specific position where you are focusing the light. The changes what you, uh, uh, um, you do in the material are around 10 to the minus four, 10 to the minus three. It's nothing actually. For a derodition, actually, if you take this number, this is, I mean, first uh, perturbation theory will tell you that this is zero, okay? Or Fourier uh, series or whatever, you will kill this, this, uh, uh, the, this term. But as you will see in these images, this very small contrast is 
good enough to um, propagate light, actually to guide light. But it's the, our message, our, 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 our message, our focus, actually, where our goal and the experiment. To have a lattice, you need to create the web guide in a different configuration. As our, mic, our area is focusing on photonic lattices, we're trying to connect, for example, results from condensed matter physics and to fabricate different lattice configuration and a study with light. This is the, the main idea. And for example, this uh, Lib lattice, I will not show you today, but we have a very important uh, observation here. I mean, the, the first uh, flat band mode observed was in this lattice and we, we, we did it with some colleague from Edinburgh and in two different PRLs and it was a, it was a quite cited paper. And this is a Lib lattice, this is a Kagome lattice. These two lattices were fabricated in Jena in Germany for our colleague, but we measure in our lab. And these two different here, we, we fabricate in our lab. This is a Lib Rivo lattice and this is a Stab lattice. Do you want to ask something? Yeah, so I have a question about this elliptical shape of waveguides. Uh, what determines this long axis of ellipse? Is it the direction in which the laser moves or? No, actually, no, the, the, um, it's the, the way you focus the laser because the laser focuses axially way in an axial way. Mm -hmm. And this generates an ungated uh, effective affected region. So it's the, it's, the, it's the focus of this stuff. You can, there are some techniques to correct this ellipticity, but at the end is, is I mean, it's too, uh, they, they are too complicated to really implement it. And the web guy work uh, perfectly equally. So uh, people do not really put much money on that, actually trying to correct the, 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 the web guide because it's too complicated and you can get a uh, very nice result equally with the elliptical guy, but we'll, uh, it's something that we we would like to to do in the in the in the future, because I mean uh, you can fabricate this web guy with different technique using the same setup. With uh, there are two essential technique. One is called multi scan method that you create the the web guy passing uh, several times in the same area. Um, and with a chief of 25 uh, nanometer, for example, you just pass one way, you move a little bit, you pass another way. And in this way, you can create a, a more, a, a wider, a wider wave gap, right? a fatter one. And actually this is uh, how we did uh, the experiment I will show you in, in a minute. Uh, but now, uh, but this is a very um, time consuming technique because for every wet guy, you need around one hour. So it's really consuming time. But now we're passing just one time uh, to generate a single wet guy and we take two minutes. But as we are passing just one time, we're fabricating more elliptical wet guy. So you can correct that, but it has some cost, okay? It's not free, correct that, okay? Uh, there are different techniques to, to do it. But as you said, well, the, the wet guy elliptical, you can notice here, you, well, every, every, much, every image can show you that it's elliptical, um, but it's not a problem, depending on the configuration. But it's very important because, for example, for a lip lattice, there is no any problem because you will only uh, have the problem that this uh, vertical coupling constant will be different to the horizontal, but you can change that. I mean, you can, you can uh, reduce the horizontal distance, you can, you can construct a, a, a symmetric lattice, correcting that. But in a Kagome lattice, um, produces that this lattice uh, actually wasn't useful for anything. Actually, we haven't published anything with this lattice um, because of that, because as the uh, web guy are elliptical, the, the coupling constant are different, are not symmetric. This coupling constant is different to this one. And in that way, you don't have a flat band, for example, because the Kagome lattice is required to have all the coupling constant equal in order to have a flat band. And this, this is something that can uh, need to be corrected, for example, in this lattice, if you want to excite flat band phenomena. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will show, I will focus now on, on trying to explain this result, that is the main result I will show you today, that is the experimental observation of interval interorbital coupling. We published just in August this year was the uh, editor suggestion, and 
the resume of this uh, work is, is, is shown here in, the, in this image, actually. But I will, I will try to explain you the concept. First of all, we wanted to make an, an, an analog of an atoms. I meant to, to, to claim that we are working with 2D atoms and our web guide are a, good, a, a very good analog uh, of an atom, okay? And when you have an atom and you learn quantum mechanics, but I will talk about one, one potential, one D potential well because it's simple and you, you can really get the expressions. Um, you have a, this kind of potential well. You you learn that you have an S mode, a P mode, a D mode, an F mode, a whatever, whatever, whatever. And chemistry start to to play the game, okay? But you have different atoms with different energies, and that's it, okay? And quite important, the different energies. Uh, if you have a web guide and if you fabricate a web guide, you can have the same, but in the other way around, because uh, 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 an attractive potential well is negative in some sense, but uh, an attractive web guide is positive in the, in the sense of refractive index contrast. You need a, a positive refractive index the contrast to generate the web guide. So the orientation is, this, I mean, the, the, the mathematical equation have a, a minus uh, in front of the potential structure. That's it. The, the only difference actually in the equation are as, as I minus. Um, so you have a, a fundamental mode that this, it, these are experimental images. This is the fundamental mode of the web guide. This is a dipole, uh, a vertically oriented dipole. You have a tripole. We also observe in this model, I don't know if in this presentation, but uh, a dipole, a horizontally oriented dipole. That is something I was telling uh, Maxime before that it's quite complicated in our configuration right now to generate the horizontal dipole, for example, it's due to the ellipticity, okay? Um, and as I told you before, you can change the wavelength or the width or wherever, but we focus actually in this experiment in changing delta n. This is our control parameter that we change it um, to generate multi-orbital webguide. This is the way we do it in this experiment. And here is the example how we, 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 we are thinking on that. I mean, if you use a, a moderate power, you will create a webguide. But if you increase the, the, the fabrication uh, laser power, you can generate a, a web guide with a larger in the contrast, okay? And this is where we are, how we are changing actually delta N and how we, we, we were uh, performing the experiment. The theoretical concept is not mine. It's, well, you can draw in a, in a, in a blackboard actually. It's, I don't know who invented it. Uh, we took it from a, a paper from a people from Cold Atoms. I will cite a, in, at the end. But essentially this, you have two wet guides that are equal. So you have a, a fundamental mode in the first wet guide, a fundamental mode in the second wet guide, and they can interact. So you define a coupling constant that it is BS, and perfect. The couple mode theory work perfectly and you can write the equation and you can start to play games with discrete lattices. But then if you start to the tune, for example, the second wet guide, you will realize that you can excite a second mode because you, you increase delta n, but also the, um, the propagation constant or the energy, doesn't matter how you call it, but the, the, the energy of this, the fundamental mode will be the tune with respect to the first wet guy, obviously, because the wet guy are different, okay? And the energy will be different. If you write out the equation and you run a numerical simulation discrete with the discrete equation, you will see that when the, the tanning is zero, you have a maximum transfer of energy between one and two wet guide. But when the delta, the tanning increases, doesn't matter the sign, uh, the power, the transfer power to the second wet guide reduces, 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 up to around zero. It's not zero, but reduces quite a lot. We can talk about that is well, see. Then, if you continue the tanning, the, the second wet guy, you will realize that in some moment, we don't know when, but in some moment, the energy of the first, uh, the fundamental mode in the first wet guy will be the same that the energy of the variation constant of the dipole. And in that way, you will have a coupling constant that is called BSP. 
and you can you will have dynamic between them they will they will see each other because in this in this area here you can define the coupling constant as i told you at the at the, at the very beginning of the talk but you don't know if they will see each other because it's quite important to be close to a uh, time in zero in order to have a real interaction between them okay uh we this was the theoretical blackboard co uh, concept and then we went to uh, continuous numerical simulations, no discrete, just the, uh, the, the paraxial wave equation, where we just take the, uh, the potential structure that is two wave guides uh, with the realistic parameter, et cetera. Um, and we perform the simulation just by changing the refractor in the contrast between the, the wave guide two and the wave guide one. The wave guide I1 will be the, um, the first wood guy, I mean, the top wood guy, the, the, the one that is marked with this yellow circle or ellip ellipse. And this is the wood guy one. So when the tanning is zero, I mean, when the both wood guys are equal, you have a maximum transference of energy. The same thing here, of course, because the discrete model is okay there. Then the power transferring to the second wave decreases, 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 decreases up to not zero, but decreased quite a lot, actually the same length here. But then, and this is interesting, the wet guy, the second wet guy, the, the one on the bottom, uh, as the refractive index, index is increasing, in some moment, in some parameter regime, depending on the wave, the wet guy profile, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's not that simple to compute it, compute this. Uh, you start to notice that the color is changing. And the color changing means for us uh, that the second wet guy starts supporting a, sec a second mode because the threshold condition that I told you before is a start to be fulfilled. So when I pass, pass from uh, yellow uh, to soft yellow to kind of orange, uh, the second wet guy start to um, to have a second order mode, and then you start to see that the power start to increase again. For example, here in this point, you see that the uh, the light coupled to the second wet guy in the form of a dipole excite a dipole in the second mode, and there is of course a maximum uh, position that is this point here is a very sharp peak, actually quite to quite difficult to really obtain the experiment. Uh, where you obtain a maximum transfer that is almost as close to one, okay? You you have a here a maximum transfer into a S mode, of course, because here the, the both with guy are equal, but here you have the perfect detaining where you, you have a perfect transfer of energy between a fundamental mode into a dipole. That's exactly this, this regime here, the theoretical concept. Then you can continue, and this is a good point as uh, uh, related to the, the draft uh, Maxim showed me at the beginning, uh, where if you continue to do this, you just will find a, 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 a new regime where now you start to transfer uh, the total power to the tripod and so on and so forth. So the tripod appears here, of course, because our wet guy are elliptical. But if you assume a, a circular wet guy, you will see this effect and uh, will happen with the D, D wave function or, or whatever. Actually, this peak will be degenerated for a circular wet guy because you will have a fundamental, I mean, a vertical and a horizontal dipole. But actually this, uh, well, it's a degenerated profile. So this is numerics, directly numeric. This is a theoretical concept, the idea. This is the numerical confirmation that this could be happen. And then we run the experiment, okay? Uh, as I, I, I'm talking too much, I, I have to go faster, sorry. Uh, this is the experiment. So we run the experiment by changing the, 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 the power, the, the writing power. And the color, different color means different waveguides. So we run, several experiments trying to find the right condition. And, and this is a wildlife microscopy image. Uh, it's not uh, a direct indication of uh, the wave guy because it's white light. White light means all color there. And you know, you know from the, the first expression I, I, I wrote, uh, 
uh, that the wavelength make difference because a shorter wavelength will indicate a higher order mode are possible to be excited. So, uh, but nevertheless, it's a it's a good reference. Here we start to start. You see that the wet guy is essentially fundamental. You, know, you don't see any 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 dipole configuration. But here you start to see some mixture uh, phenomena. Up to here, this is a white light dipole actually. Uh, and you see that here is a good position. I mean, I mean, a good writing power for having a dipolar web guide. And this is the way we did. We 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 scan a different power up to find the right condition. But up to, if you continue increasing the power, you will notice here. For example, here there is a horizontal dipole. Okay, actually, you you see that you see that the horizontal dipole, and this can be uh, 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 seen here. Actually, fundamental, the vertical dipole, a horizontal dipole, uh, uh, a tripole. Uh, this is a, a known, not well performed experiment. It's just a injecting the light and focus with the lens. So this is the reason why the the the, the this dipole is not really nice. But nevertheless, it's there, and you you can observe actually the the node also here, the node, etc. Um, to see this observation, I mean the prediction from the numerics, we run uh, a lot of samples. We fabricate several samples, and we run uh, an scan method, a set scan method. Because we don't have fluorescence, so we cannot take images from the top, but we can take images from the output faces. What we did was to fabricate, for example, a larger fundamental wet guide and a shorter dipole, uh, dipolar wet guide. So in that way, we know that uh, we can trace perfectly the dynamics, okay? Because here, only a few part of the energy will jump. Here. A, a, a bit larger part of the energy will jump, and here a bit more larger. So it's kind of a scan fabricated several sample, and this is the way we construct this very nice image. That actually is the main message of this paper. Uh, will show you that here the fundamental mode start to excite the dipole, a very nice dipole. I really like this dipole, and here we have kind of experimental perfect condition. As I told you, and the numeric predicted that this perfect condition for the, the tanning zero between the S and P mode is really hard to find numerically. It's a very sharp peak uh, numerically. So experimentally, it's, it's almost impossible to get the exact precise situation. But we are very close, actually. This is less than 1% of the energy that is still remaining there. So this is a nice cosine-like uh, oscillation that show you that we can now play the game with couple more theory uh, in between S and P mode. Uh, and this is how uh, the idea. Uh, we run a lot of experiment and we demonstrate the same. Actually, this is the experimental, the experimental um, uh, graphic. I, I will uh, explain this and I will uh, uh, give you the, 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 the yeah, I will try to answer Roman. Uh, this figure showed the same diagram than before, but experimentally with the peaks. Actually, you see the chart peak, etc. But this is our experimental result, and um, we are very proud of them because it means a lot of work, and and we really see uh, the the prediction for numeric. Roman, Stavale. Ah uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so I I have a couple of questions about the experiment. Uh, so I didn't really get, um, so when you showed this set of single wave guides, how do you excite a specific mode? For example, a dipole mode, because it, mm -hmm. it has both uh, like uh, fundamental yeah. and dipole mode. Yeah. Do I answer now or do you have an other question? Uh, it, it's a bit different. So, so maybe, okay. yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you, you can perform a um, simple and complex experiment. Here we made it simpler. But we can do it complex. What, the, what do I mean? Uh, simple experiment means that you get the laser, you put a lens, and you, you focus on the web guy. That's it. OK? It's mm -hmm. a very simple experiment. Everyone can do it. I was theoretician at the beginning, so I, I, I can do it. And with that condition, obviously, you excite very well the fundamental mode. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's almost the same. The mm -hmm. dipole it is more complicated. Then you, you have to go a bit up or a bit down and you will excite this part of this part of the dipole and you will see kind of an incoherent excitation, okay? Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. how you will do it in an experiment. But here we are doing perfectly because we are exciting the dipole using the fundamental mode because we are always exciting the, the fundamental mode. You see that we always focus the, the laser in the white wet guide that is the, the, the fundamental wet guide. So, uh, and what we know from the simulation and the experiment that the, the, the interaction happened perfectly and the dipole excited perfectly because we are not, we don't need to, to, to match the special profile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is the way we do it here. So this experiment showed you this interaction, but it's all so uh, more converted immediately mm -hmm. because I can convert a fundamental mode in, in any mode because actually I can use this concept here, uh, sorry, here, and I can induce a triple without mm -hmm. need, uh, any need to really excite the triple. But we can excite triple, we can excite dipole as well using a, an image configuration setup that is based on a special light modulator. There is a more complicated uh, f uh, experiment, but we also do it in the, in the, in the lab uh, every day. So it's, it's also possible, but mm -hmm. a bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. so, so in this uh, slide, in, in the next slide, I think, yeah, here, uh, uh, b before that, where you have a single wave guide here, you, uh, you excite like, for example, I don't know, fi, fi, uh, 20th wave guide, yeah, you have a very good dipole mode. So mm -hmm. it's a complex setup, right? So because if you just uh, excite it with a focused beam, you'll get superposition. Uh, you're right, but uh, no, actually in this case, the same, we're just focusing the laser and mm -hmm. we're, you, you play a bit, I mean, you are there, and you cal you you tune. I mean, you go a bit up, a bit down, and a bit mm -hmm. uh, left, a bit mm -hmm. right, and then you get a very nice profile. Because mm -hmm. you you have to see that this this is so oscillating and set. So depending on the the, the length of the sample, mm -hmm. this will evolve in different ways. So sometimes for some wet guy, you you get a nice pattern. Mm -hmm. Actually, this mm -hmm. is the best. Not okay. not correct excitation we have of the dipole. Mm -hmm. Here you can see more. I mean, you you have a lot of uh, light surrounding and the tripod mm -hmm. you you can see well this must be more complicated but at the end for example the tripod i just it has a center i mean in the, in the center uh, has a maximum so it's very quite similar to the the fundamental so i just mm -hmm. have to put it there it's, it's i mean it's a five minute calibration but you you mm -hmm. you, you will get a, a nice dipole configuration for example here or if you take a different wave guy, you will have more light here and less here because it's oscillating. So it's mm -hmm, quite, mm -hmm. quite, yeah, yeah. The, the, okay. the sample, the day. Okay, thank you. And, and another brief question. Uh, so the power that you apply uh, defines the uh, this delta N, right? Uh, so I wonder, can you change the power during uh, the writing of a single wave guide. So, for example, to make a periodic wave guide, is it possible? Yeah, everything is possible in the fabrication process because we automatize everything. So mm -hmm. we just, I mean, we we up to now we are only fabricating um, equal wet guide. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, along the the, uh, the probation uh, mm -hmm. distance, mm -hmm. we are just fix the power and write the wet guide. But mm -hmm. we can change in time also. Uh, mm -hmm. because, but essentially, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue about automatization. That's it. Because we control the power with a, yeah. a, a, a wave plate, uh -huh. a rotator. So it's simple. It's simple to but, do it if you want to do it. But, but, but how, how fast it, it's possible to do this? So for example, how small can be the period of this waveguide if you change the power oh. harmonically? Can you make it like one micron or it would be much larger? We well, we fabricate our wet guide with 0.4 millimeter per second. Mm -hmm. This is the way we are really moving, mm -hmm. um, and this will give you. Uh, I don't know actually because uh, these are two two different parameters. One is the one the the play that is moving, 
Mm -hmm. And another one is a rotator that you have to do this or this in order to give more or less power. So they are in principle completely separated, but we, we have never do it in a loop trying to, to really, for example, try to be writing and the other guy doing something like that, for example. Mm -hmm. We could try it. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, could be complicated, uh, although a resolution of micrometer could be too much, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that it will be our resolution will be more close to 10 micrometers. This mm -hmm. could be more reasonable, mm -hmm. but well, depend on the automatization. And um, as the web guides is, is more, I mean, the writing velocity is, is small. I mean, it's such is 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 slow velocity. We can do this quite fast, I think. But I, I don't know the time uh, of the rotation. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. but it's doable. It's doable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You. Mm -hmm. As always, I, I always running out of time somehow. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Actually, we can a little bit have more time. So it's, it's okay. Fun. Thank you, Story, for that. I always like that. Um, well, well, after that, I showed you that the, that the we can convert doing the uh, using this concept of the resonant condition. A fundamental mode in a in a in a dipole and we can we can make them interact because it's important uh, to tune this this coefficient and the, the propagation constant of the energy in order they interact. As I told you at the very beginning, when we started to play this game before fabricating lattices, we ran down the, the models and we allowed the, this mode to couple to this mode and to this mode, and everything was correct as tradition. But then the experiment told us that this, this is not really possible if they're not close enough in propagation constant or energy. Okay, you, you need this resonance condition in order they really interact with each other. Okay, this is a, a very important point. Uh, we characterize the system. We fabricate different lattices, deeper dimer configuration in order to 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 construct the the coupling versus distant uh, uh, figure uh, that is important to fabricate in a lattice. Uh, we also offer a system that is a tripod, and this is uh, uh, connected with the the question of Roman. That actually we use. Uh, we wanted to generate a um, beam splitter. But a phase beam splitter, because usually a, a, a beam splitter is separating two equal part, for example, uh, a, a beam, uh, but without any phase difference. And for some uh, operation in quantum optics, when the, the guy do a lot of uh, logical operation in a, on a chip, you sometimes need to change the phases. It's important to generate different mode. So our proposal was to use a web guide that we excite easily here as a fundamental. Then we we allow them interact with the a second wet guide. There's a dipolar wet guide, so we create the dipole. And actually, this is the image. This is the first generated uh, after the experiment. Actually, this is the way we generate the dipole it's here. So we let them propagate, and then we let them interact with two different wet guides, Singular, mo uh, singular mo single mode with guy at the end to generate two beams. But now these two beams are defaced. Actually, these are two. This is a beam splitter because this wet guy you can kill this wet guy. Although you have some energy, you can just stop the wet guy and, and that's it. So you you will have a beam splitter, but it's with an, a phase different between the amplitude. Okay, this was a proposal uh, thinking on quantum operation. Um, one and and. Um, in, less, in a few minutes, I will try to convince you that why it is important to um, to have this interaction. Actually, this is connected with some maxing word uh, that uh, that is very interesting. Actually, and it's about to to study interaction between S and P function or D function or F function, wherever. Try to think web guide or lattices. Actually, lattices as a uh, as an a scenario where you play with all the coupling or possible couplings of possible wave function and everything. Why? Because there are some studies showing that, for example, this kind of interaction due to the appearance of negative coupling constant, because the dipole has a, a plus and minus wave function. I didn't explain in the slide before, but this is the idea of the dipole, that you have a plus function 
a wave function and a negative one. So this induced, depending on the orientation, a negative coupling constant. It's a way to do it. Actually, it was a, a goal for a lot of people working on that for several years. And this is a way, a simple way to do it, to have negative coupling constants. Um, and this generates, for example, that a simple lattice uh, allowed you to, to have topological state due to effective magnetic field that appears because the negative coupling constant are you can you can draw this and it's kind of um, a magnetic flux in the in the in a plaquette for example and this magnetic fluid with when the coupling uh, negative uh, the coupling constant is negative it's kind of a p uh, flux in the in a plaquette and this allow kind of localization tendency. Uh, we, we are working on that, so I cannot tell you more, but uh, another thing that appear when you start to uh, study uh, lattices, trivial lattices, standard lattices, we, and you are assuming S and P interaction, uh, you get, for example, flat band uh, and the spectrum just by free, because you have for free this negative coupling constant that uh, kill the transport and allow you to have localization for free, only for linear uh, geometries. We started to play this game, this is a theoretical work, but we, we played this with, for example, a 1D lattice with uh, this, um, yeah, I don't remember the name, with the, but alternated uh, wet guide. And we, 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 I mean, we construct the model just thinking that every wet guide can have a, a fundamental and a dipolar mode, and then you start to play the game. This is almost a diamond lattice. I don't want to tell you more, but this is almost a one uh, a diamond uh, rhombic lattice, and we have a flat band condition there only because of the interaction between fundamental and dipolar state that allow you to have flat bands, for example, uh, and flat band there, and I don't remember if another one, but it's due to this interaction, okay. Uh, you can have this very localized state due to these flat bands. You can have a surface. Um, a, a state that I don't know if they're topological because at this time, 2019, we were not playing with topology. Actually, uh, I, I wasn't paired with topology until last year, actually. And in this model, actually, we have surface mode, but we didn't check, for example, if they are topological. But then we write, we wrote this, this paper that is quite connected to the, the Maxim one that is trying to the same trying to have uh, a standard trivial lattices and make them topological due to this hybridized interaction. This is quite nice, actually. Actually, my model here is the same except one constant that the one that the, was uh, published by uh, Maxim. And it's quite nice because they are quite close. Actually, this was August and this was October of last year. So people is interested in this kind of issue. It's interesting to be talking about that because Simple lattices, this is a one-dimensional lattice. This is a one-dimensional lattice where you were here, theoretically speaking, we are allowing uh, the, the interaction between S and P wave function. This increased the dimensionality of the lattice. It this allows you to, to find co exotic conditions. Actually, I, I cannot explain you much here, but you will see that this lattice, depending on the detanning between the S and wave function, you can have a, a, an input condition that will be immobile in a standard lattice, but in some moment, the guy evolves ballistically. Actually, this hole there means that the light split very fastly, but then recover again. So you can have very different, very nice, a thing that you cannot find in a conventional lattice. In a conventional lattice, you will have this uh, pattern just like here, like think like in k equal to zero, and nothing else, only pro a straight propagation. Also, appears to a surface state, and this was the first um, computation we did. Actually, this for uh, an Argentinian guy that's working in our uh, faculty. He is a topological guy, and this is the reason why he, he's in this paper that he talk us how to compute the sack phases or things like that. So this is, was the first computation we did in topological uh, lattices last year. And we demonstrate that this, although these are not symmetric uh, uh, state in the term like an S, S 
uh, H uh, lattice that is symmetric, is in zero and always the same, we demonstrate that this, uh, the, uh, the H state that appear here after the cone um, uh, are topological due to the phase state. And these are the kind of, and this is the main, the same method that, that the Maxim chose somehow in his paper. Uh, but we also, as I told you before, what for? Well, because the interaction allows you to have a transfer regime which are different. Then you also have surface state that are topological. And I didn't do anything else than allowing to interact S and P mode. But also, and this is more important for me because I work in flat band, flat band lattices for a while, uh, you can also have flat band condition here. And both bands become completely flat and not dispersive at all. So you can really go from a dispersive um, system, pass into the flat band condition and generate localization immediately. So this is a kind of a switch system uh, where you have a, an interrupter here that you can, uh, 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 well, you can interrupt. Um, just to conclude, I wanted to show you some very fresh result just to, to show you something different. This was published actually on Monday. Uh, it's a very simple uh, experimental observation about how the um, compression of a lattice um, changes the, the transport properties. Uh, this is quite trivial. This experiment that was published, actually we are performing a, a different one right now that is much more complicated. Um, but I cannot tell you much, much more about that, but we show you that uh, sometime, somehow the flat band localization persists, although we're not uh, uh, in, the, in the right limit. Some time ago, some people was uh, claiming that, for example, uh, actually you can compute it, a leaf lattice will lose the flat band once the uh, diagonal coupling is, is switched on. But we, we face that and we fabricate different lattices where as we are decreasing the lattice and we're compressing the lattice, the, the diagonal interaction start to, to be more and more important. And this is what we study actually, when the, this uh, flat band localization is lost. And here you can see the flat, the, the spectrum is quite flat and suddenly increase abruptly. So this is what we follow. We fabricate the lattice and we, well, well this is numeric and simulations, but the important is the experiment. We show this experimentally and actually we can claim that our flat band regime is quite sure or quite safe up to some nominal distance. This is what obviously the, will depend on the lattice, but we know that there is a regime for flat band localization that will, after this, threshold will be simply destroyed and you will have a destruction of the flat band lattice. But we observe it here, the persistence of the flat band uh, properties up to some, um, some nominal distance, yeah, due to the effect of the diagonal interaction. That is always quite small. Actually, this is the vertical, the horizontal interaction, and it's the, the diagonal. It's always small compared to the previous one, but in some moment it start to be larger and then start to, to be important. Um, just to conclude, uh, this, well, we should meet this result, no, not this one, but the, the one I will show you, um, about the SH uh, stab lattice. And first of all, a stab lattice is something like that, very similar to a uh, leaf lattice, um, but a, a smaller one. And we observe localization in this paper, but flat bands, I'm not talking about flat band today, but this is a flat band observation. But then this, this January, uh, we started to play with what happened if we take the stuff and we demer demerize it, uh, the lattice. So we include a T2, T1, T2, T1 as essentially the same like an SS, H lattice. We have the band, the flat bands, and, and that's it. I mean, nothing serious. But if you analyze the spectrum, you will realize that there is also a transition uh, um, like the SSH lattice, uh, where you, you can find this H state. Actually, this line here is an H state, and this is another H state. And what is nice is that we found in this system, three edge mode. 
And this is quite interesting because um, we have two modes that are decaying exponentially into the bulk. And this one is, this is the, the, the beta city equal to one, the positive, and this is the negative uh, here, minus one, and decay exponentially into the bulk. But they, they are not in the, in the right, uh, in the other border, because they live here, in the left border, they is here. But in the right border, they do not live there. But we found another mode that lived there. Actually, this is essentially the same that the S-H model that also decays exponentially, but only from the right side. We were discussing quite a lot about if, if these guys are topological or not, because they appear below some threshold. And this mode is, is, is here also, and also uh, live below the threshold. Okay, but here you cannot see it because here is also the flat band. So the flat band somehow occult uh, is is occulting the this H state, but this guy lives also there. So we don't know if this guy are topological. This is, is not a chiral lattice, and well, I'm not expert on this kind of symmetries and things like that, but I know that it's not chiral. Um, so we don't have any symmetry here or any definite symmetry or any well topological quanti quantity to, to claim that this guy are topological. So you can say why you have a localization of the surface here. Uh, it's tricky because you can see, okay, this is much be a defect state. I mean, a time state or a chocolate state. So we run the experiment, we run the computation, and this is not a chocolate state. Actually, the, the time state, sorry, well, it doesn't matter, actually, the band of the community, the time state will live from the top of the band or from the bottom of the band into the gap. Well, they will live here, 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 if you want to say, but not in the internal gap, okay? Uh, we we performed the experiment and we run the simulation. We know perfectly that the, this guy are not a mistake. And they share a lot of property compared to the SH lattice. So we are kind of, uh, we, we don't know actually the real origin of this guy. Uh, this is the idea of the paper, trying to open the discussion where the, the, the simple condition that you find in this kind of SSH lattice are not in the system and you somehow lose some uh, clarity or how to define this state. We performed the experiment, of course, and we observed nicely, actually, we fabricated the, the lattices uh, and observed nicely the localization up to the threshold what is predicted, and then also, I mean, uh, a diffraction and nothing uh, about localization. And uh, what is important in this system that is, is important, also difficult, is that the, la the, 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 um, the, the edge mode are somehow um, superposed with the flat band mode. And this is tricky, actually, when we side different state with different side. Here you can see the kind of uh, flat band mode, uh, but nevertheless, we observe it here. And also the other second, the third uh, edge state in the right surface is also excited somewhere there, but then it's connected with the flat band state. So I think with this, I will conclude. Sorry if I, I took too much time, but I want to, to show you that we, we can fabricate lattices uh, in any possible 2D configuration. Uh, uh, it's quite controllable, actually, the, the, the fabrication setup, and we are controlling quite well right now, actually. Uh, so we are quite open to, to, to discuss any possibility of collaboration on that, because we can fabricate, as it's quite simple. Um, I show you that we can make the different modes interact with each other. I mean, I can really study dynamic and a lattice where the S mode will be really interacting with the P mode, uh, not, as a, not as a theoretical aim or intention, uh, if not really, really, because we can really make them interact. Here you have a different configuration that we are, we are writing the paper of this. Uh, hopefully in the next uh, talk, I can tell you, uh, talk you about this. And the, this kind of excitation of the dipole or the P mode allow you to excite this effective magnetic field uh, that could help you to find localization in the surface 
because up here this topological edge state you can also claim that you you can find right condition for uh, Hadano's uh, boom caging a creation of fly, flat band for free etc and hopefully much more phenomena that is not written here but will that will appear in the following year so thank you very much for your attention Thank you very much, Frederick. A very nice talk, and uh, we learned a lot, uh, I'm sure. So now the talk is open for questions. Colleagues, if you have any, please raise your hands. So in the meantime, I would ask uh, maybe the first question regarding this uh, fabrication procedure. So do I understand correctly that in principle, when you fabricate the sample, you can uh, encode different waveguides with, let's say, one of them has delta n uh, 10 to the minus 3, let's say. Another one has uh, twice twice larger delta n, uh, let's say, so you, you can do like different types of waveguides in your sample mm -hmm. without without problems. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, okay. So the, the, this was my question, the first one. And then the second one, how precisely can you control this cross-section of elliptical waveguide? Is it is it really high quality uh, or you have some uh, deviation? from this elliptical shape. So from, from um, one waveguide to the other. I mean, well, every time you fabricate something, you must know that uh, you cannot fabricate two equal things. Mm -hmm. uh, two cars are not equal, two pens are not equal. So here also, because the glass, I mean, it's a glass, it's a borosilicate glass, so it has a difference in density, we believe and we want to believe that this is quite homogeneous and that all the wet guy will be the same, but sometimes you get some differences. Uh, but then you fabricate another sample and then things uh, looks like they, they should look. So you always have to consider in experiment that you will have always a weak disorder effect, always. But as far as us, we, we have been playing with this kind of lattice, this kind of lattice, another one that we have, our lattices are quite good in, 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 in terms of the, the symmetry of the system. And you detect that with the diffraction pattern, for example, you excite a wet guy in the center and you see how the light evolves. And you see it quite nicely that the, the, the lattices are quite, quite okay. But you always have some, some perturbation and you cannot avoid that. Uh, so you, you always have some di disorder uh, energy that could be diagonal or off diagonal because it will depend on the, the, the waveguide profile. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the quality of the lattice is quite, quite okay, I would say, because I, I'm tradition uh, originally. So, and uh, the first time when I, I, I see images, experimental images, is something like that. When I visited a friend in, in San Francisco, Chigan Chen, that worked lattices, and he told me this lattice is periodic, perfectly periodic. But I was the audition and I said, no, this is not periodic. I mean, here you have really a disorder lab, this or disorder pattern, because all the wet guys are not equal. So the experiment, this kind of experiment are quite complicated. So this could be a perfectly periodic lattice. But as a theoretician, you will not agree with me. Okay. But if I move to this kind of lattice here, you will see, well, this is more, much more better in terms of the homogeneity of the lattice. And actually, I will, I will assure that actually, this is the reason why, why we are working on this system right now, because uh, the lattice you really fabricate here are quite homogeneous, I quite equal the web guide. So I'm really confident of, of that right now with the technique we have. Mm -hmm. And then another question, do you have any pronounced effects, uh, let's, let's say coming from the next nearest neighbor interaction, because people in the literature are reporting that if your waveguides are densely packed in the sample, then uh, there should be some interaction of the next nearest neighbors. Yeah, well, I, I showed something about the, I have too many, let me go faster here. Here, we somehow study this, uh, this kind of effect about the second nearest neighbor will be the diagonal here. Mm -hmm. and, and this is actually, this curve are experimentally. This is the vertical coupling, the horizontal couplings, vertical, horizontal. 
and this is the diagonal, the second order effect. So the question, the, the answer will be, will depend on the propagation length. Our lattices are right now short. I mean, we, we can fabricate up to five centimeters. Uh, maybe it's nothing for you that, but it's around three, well, depend on the system, but I mean, allow you to, to see these kind of images where you can excite all the lattice if you want in five centimeters. Okay, it's quite a lot in our system. But right now we are, uh, we are I mean, today uh, arrives a new sample of seven centimeter, and then we have to try it and, and check what, what's going on. Why I'm telling you that? Because second order effect and important and, and kind of accumulative effect that will be more important or will appear uh, with where the, when the propagation length is larger. So there really will be an effect. So after, and we, when we perform the experiment of the leaf localization, uh, we run experiment up to 10 centimeter in a silica glass uh, sample. And then we have a perfect localization. But then if you run the simulation, try to see, but it was, was a question of a referee. We run the simulation until 20 centimeter and then you can start to see that there is some weak effect on the cap on, on the nearest neighbor interaction so everything will depend on the on the length the duration length in mm -hmm. order to see how important it is and and here as i told you actually uh you can see well here that in all this region, we have the, the, the diagonal interaction, the second order interaction is there. Actually, this is the, the spectrum deformation due to that. And you see that in the, in the first pan, it's quite flat. So up to this region, 18 micrometer around or that, we can assume that the BD is really weak. It's really weak and, and will not appear. So will not be important. In, 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 in result that we are working now that I cannot comment to you right now because we, we are uh, finding, uh, finalizing the writing process that is connected with this figure, we start to see effect of, of second order interaction. But will depend a lot of the wave function also because this uh, mode is quite broad, as you see, and this wave uh, uh, mode is also broad. So will depend a lot of, of anything. If I, I write wet guide, if I fabricate wet guide with a larger in the contrast, the wet guide mode, I mean, the mode will be narrower and the, 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 the extra interaction will be smaller. So everything depends on the interaction and you can control that, for example, to uh, fabricate on, uh, larger in the contrast wet guides in order to have narrower wet function and then a, a, a shorter coupling uh, interaction. So the, depending what you want to study actually, if what you will have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So colleagues, uh, are there any other questions, please? Uh, well, at least I do not see uh, questions at this stage. So uh, I wanted to mention just that uh, our department, we are organizing this conference, MetaNano, which is held annually, and we are inviting all those people you mentioned, so Yuri Kivcher, Alex Zamai, so I know them all. Uh, that's the same photonic community, basically. So mm -hmm. uh, I think we, we will be able to invite you and <laughs> because our department organizes this conference, so no problem with the invited talks. Uh -huh. Yeah. We'll be happy to maybe discuss further and collaborate. So in the meantime, we will think a bit about uh, some maybe proposals which are compatible with this platform. Because mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of experience with microwave stuff, but not that much with, with optics. And we have to keep in mind this elliptical shape, uh, some fabrication details. But I believe we, we, we can propose some interesting things because uh, topology is interesting, but nowadays people are looking on, on this higher order topological stuff and so on and so forth. Uh, and this might be really some high impact work if we if we try to combine our efforts, I believe. Yeah. And uh, we are also, yeah, we will be also happy to assist somehow with the theory because I have uh, several bright PhD students that are really trained in theory. So calculate any topological invariance, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll be happy to assist with that as well. Uh -huh. good, good to know. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming, Rodrigo. Uh, so stay in touch and uh, have a good day. Uh -huh.
Yeah, the same to you. Virtually coming, you mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So thanks uh, for everyone for participating. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. Very interesting. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.